It's match day for Forest. I know it's only a preseason, but I'm excited after the way Forest performed at Chesterfield. Welcome to your expected lineup and match preview. Good morning, good evening, or good night. Hope you guys are doing well, and welcome to Match Day. And this is going to be a fun episode. And I have one burning question on my mind that I want to know the answer to from your from you guys. Who is your current Forest favorite player? I'm intrigued to know this, and I'll reveal mine in a little bit. If you're enjoying the content, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new, and you damn well better hurry up if you want this beautiful sign framed Marilla with LED shirt lighting up your room. It is beautiful. And if you hit the magic number 249, you also get instantly the brand new Forest Home Kit, which we should hopefully see displayed later on. Okay, coming up in today's episode, I'm going to give you a quick update on the players that are available. I'm going to take you through my not predicted team, but the team I want to see because it's hard to predict in these pre-seasons. And then there's a few other bits and bobs that we need to cover off in terms of we'll look at the current size of the squad, what's missing and what we still need. You ready to have some fun? Let's do it. Okay, so there are currently two players missing from the squad in terms of the general squad that you guys would kind of know and love. And that's Matt Sells, who's still away on holiday. And that is um, Taiwo as well as the second player because of these personal issues. Now, I just want to clarify on this because it wasn't clear beforehand. We heard Nuno talking about him being injured and maybe missing parts of preseason. You had then the reports in the uh, mainstream media saying, no, he's actually got personal issues. It's come out that his personal issues that he's out with. Now, what those personal issues are, honestly, I don't know. And nor do I feel it's our business to even to look into. So we're just going to kind of let him deal with what he needs to deal with. I would suggest that you guys do the same kind of respect his personal space there. At the end of the day, we don't need to pry into every aspect of every footballer's life 24-7. So those are the two players that are missing. Outside of that, Nuno pretty much has a good size squad to um, pick from. We saw the video yesterday released by Nottingham Forest showing the players that went to Spain. We were there with our clipboard counting them all up. Dennis was there. The likes of O'Brien were there. Omar Richards, you could see him hobbling on two legs, was there as well. So it's a full squad. What we don't know is how many of the kids he's taken with him. And this is the interesting bit because this is a 24-7 camp currently while they're out in Spain. They're going to play football together. They're going to train together. They're going to eat together. They're going to shit. Uh, maybe not that. But you get the point I'm making here. So it's 24 hours and there's a lot of bonding going on, which is good for the cohesion and the morale of the squad. And it's something that Nuno pointed out as well last week. And for me, the person in charge of all that morale, and the reason I asked you guys who's your current favorite player, is Einar. For me, Einar is just slightly moving ahead of Murillo. He just seems to be that fun guy in the pack. He's serious when he needs to be, and he's fun when he needs to be, and he just seems to be able to get on with everyone, be a cracking footballer on the pitch, and just the kind of guy that I'd like to hang out with myself. So, Einar, if you're watching, if you ever want to hang out, let me know, man. But the drinks are on you. So that's my current favorite player, because, look, it was Murillo, but with all the stuff that he's been saying and what have you, he's probably still my favorite player on the pitch, but I like Einar, and he was free. What a bargain he was. So anyway, so that's the update on who's available and who isn't. Let's go and have a look at the team that I would quite like to see against um, Sunderland this evening. All right, so let's get into my team sheet and let's use our really cool. This is my favorite graphic. Let me know in the comments below. Do you like this graphic? Because you guys are the ones who provided it for those of you who helped us with the new PC. So drum roll, please. And let's do the reveal of the team as I'm going to go with Miguel in goal. I'm going to go with my favorite player, Aina, next to my second favorite player, Murillo. 
Next to the new boy Milenkovic, we'll talk about him in a second. And at right back, I'm going to go with Eric De Silva. In midfield, let's pause it and salute Zangare, man of the match last time. In the 10, I'm going to put Morgan Gibbs-White. And I'm going to put Mr. Anderson next to him. And then because of who we've got available, I'll go hudson Adoy on the left, Alanga on the right, and Chris Wood's like the only striker there. So we've got to go with it. So this is my team, ladies and gents. And what I'm doing here, I'm putting together as close to a strongest Forest team as I think we can nearly get. Now, there are a couple that I'm still on. And we'll talk about those in a second. But I'm going to address, because I know a lot of you are going to be like, whoa, where's Nico Williams? I like Nico Williams, but I'm not fully convinced by Nico Williams still. I think he was the most improved player under Nuno. said that plenty of times last season. But Eric De Silva, for me, he's just got something about him that I, I just think he could be the Murillo of this year. Don't say Jinx Serene. So I really want him to get a lot of game time in this preseason. I think he's a confident player. And I like the way he plays. Dare I say he reminds me a little bit of Spence attacking and maybe not as lazy as Spence was getting back. So that's why I've got him in there. Now you can bring Nico Williams on second half and what have you. But it's this midfield that I'm intrigued to try out. Sangare and Anderson as the six and the eight with MGW as the 10. It kind of feels like it could be something magical there. Now, I still would have considered Dominguez in there. In fact, I put him in to start with. And then I was like, oh, yeah, crap. What about um, Danilo? And I was like, oh, yeah, I could go Danilo. And then I was like, oh, yeah, crap. We've signed Anderson. So I like this. I like this that even I'm having to think about who the right player is, who's the one that we need to get in there, and so on. And this is what I want to see from Nuno in the next few friendlies is trying to find the balance between the six and the eight and the 10, because that's the combo that he's going to have to play with. We've got enough talent there, but maybe not perfect talent in terms of balance. And he's got to find that balance. Now, I personally feel Sangare is our only six. So he does really need to start in the majority of whatever the first team selection Nuno goes with. And then try him with a Danilo. Try him with a Dominguez. I still think that Dominguez pairing can work well with Sangare. And then try Morgan Gibbs-White. And then what I might do in the second half will be change that whole team, put it into a three, put Danilo on, put, um, uh, what's his name, Dominguez on. And I guess you have to chuck Ryan Yates just to appease some happy clappers and go for a 4-3-3. So he tried the three-back formation in the first half against Chesterfield. I felt it was a little bit slow, but when we switched into the 4-2-3-1, I felt the game came alive. Yes, the quality of players in certain positions was a lot better, but I think he needs to do this 4-2-3-1 one more time, test it out. If we start to see the same results against Sunderland, who should be a better opponent for us than Chesterfield, then we can start to think that things are clicking. Now, we're probably going to see Turner in the second half. You're probably going to see, I don't know, maybe Omar Richards coming on. And you might see one or two kids. So this is why I haven't tried to predict what Nuno's going to do. I've just gone with what I want here. Now, one change I was close to making was dropping Alanga and playing Nico Williams at right wing. Or even switching him and De Silva around, putting Nico Williams at right back and De Silva at right wing. Because I'm still not convinced of Alanga. So that might be an interesting one to test out. And in terms of Milenkovic, because he's flown out to Spain, I think we will see him play a little bit. We'll probably see Bolly get some minutes. We'll probably see Omar Bamadeli get some uh, Probably Worrell as well. But Milenkovic, the whole reason they've flown him out to get him into the camp is because Nuno wants all his players under his wing, 24-7, under surveillance. And maybe, just maybe, we'll see him. But it is quite tight because I don't know if he's had a training session or not. This is the team I'm going with. You agree with it or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so let's just touch on the current squad depth. Squad watch, should we call this? I don't know. Some silly made up name. You guys come up with something better. But this is the current state of play with Forest Squad. So it is, I think, in terms of 11, we've got enough of an 11. I still think we need a striker. We need a right winger. For me, those two are now the priority positions that we need in this window. And I, I probably think, oh, I've got Turner's back, man. 
forgot to mention that to you guys. Turner's back. Sorry, Crypto. He's back, though. He's out in Spain. But I think there's enough there in terms of the midfielders. Maybe another centre-back. Obviously, there's a few kids here, and we're expecting quite a few of these squad players to go out on loan or be sold, the likes of Worrell, O'Brien, Dennis, maybe. But I'm going to say this, right? I still like Dennis. I've always backed him and O'Brien, and they just haven't been played correctly because they were under the Cooper regime. And I am intrigued. I am intrigued to see if Nuno fancies a crack at them and getting them in their right position. Now, Dennis made an awful pass against Chesterfield. Everyone was talking about it, but he did score a goal that shouldn't have been disallowed. And he did one or two other things as well, but playing in a nine. For me, he's a winger and ideally on the left-hand side. I just wonder if Nuno will have a look at him. And I thought O'Brien was quite tidy when he was on the pitch as well. So I think it needs to be a clean slate with some of these fringe players or these outcasted players from the previous regime. And that would actually save us money. If Dennis, can, if Nuno can get a tune out of Dennis, then that saves us maybe 10 to 15 million on a backup winger that Nuno so desperately wants. You could argue the same with Josh Bowler, although I'm not that convinced on him if I'm being honest. But for me, striker and right winger are definitely the two positions we need and maybe another six just in case Sangare doesn't turn into the beast I've promised you all guys so what do you think of the squad size is it looking a little healthier for you guys now or do you still think there's some gaps that need to be filled let me know as always in the comments all right so that's my team that's what I think's happening with the squad I'm liking what I'm seeing etc etc as we've just said and normally at this stage of the video, as I said last week against Chesterfield, I'd give you guys a score prediction. But I did say against Chesterfield, who cares? It's a preseason. As long as you see chemistry, cohesion, attacking football, screw the minutes in the legs. That's what I want to see. I'm going to, I want to see a win today. I really want Forrest to build on the brilliant second half they had against Chesterfield. Honestly, I came away from that game for the first time in many a year thinking, I'm looking forward to the next preseason match. I can't wait to see what Nuno's going to do. Will he go with the team that I just showed you guys? Will we see that for 45 minutes and then maybe the kids in the second half or what have you? I don't know, but I'm excited to see it. Now, usually when I get this excited about Forest game, they usually end up disappointing me. So I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. And don't you lot start saying jinx to me, jinx to me in the comments, right? I'm just excited for the first time in my life about a preseason match. Let me have my moment. And I'm going to say Forrest are going to beat Sunderland. 3-1. I think we're going to concede a silly goal. But we'll still score three goals. And I think Sangari will be man of the match again. Because I told you lot he's a good player. And you're finally starting to listen to me. Because I've never, ever been wrong that much. If you've enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to Forest Fan TV if you are new. And don't forget, we'll be back for the watch along at 5.40 tonight. So come tune in and have some fun with the rest of the Forest fans in the chat. We'll see you then. Come on, you Reds, get your Murillo tickets.